What's up guys? So, today I want to discuss seasonal changes for get home bags, bug out bags, just emergency kits, other things like that. As you can tell and probably as you're aware, winter is pretty much here and from what I've been hearing it's going to stay for a good amount of time. So with that, bug out items and preps and get home bag things, you should be seasonally changing them for your situation depending on where you're at. Now I get some of you southern folk probably watching this, they're probably going to be like, well it doesn't drop below 40 degrees. Well that's still a big change from going, you know, 80 degrees normally down to 40 at night. That's still a big change for you. Might be not as big as a change for us up here north because it can go 80 degrees in the summertime and then go negative 50 in the wintertime. So most of you are familiar with the older bag that I used to use, which is a Kelty Red Wing 50 bag. Awesome bag. Really love this. I was on the East Coast at that specific time, so it didn't get below zero very much at all. So a 50 liter pack was completely capable for what I needed to do, plus where I worked. And I'm, I'm discussing get home bag more, but this can also tie into bug out bag and other emergency kits and stuff like that. So when I moved, to a northern, I'm pretty close to Canada right now, and it's it's very absolutely cold up here. So my get home bag or bug out bag had to go through changes, especially seasonal and then regional along with that. So say you move, you're gonna have to find and figure things out. You know, what kind of equipment do I need? It's probably going to change. And that is exactly what I'm gonna get into this. So this is my bug out bag or my get home bag mainly. My bug out bag is mainly a kit that can go in the vehicle. It's much larger than this, but the basic small thing. So everyone's like, oh my gosh, you have the Kelty Eagle 128 as a get home bag? Yes, but you gotta understand the parameters. Yours may not be needed to be this big. I'm right now 60 miles from the nearest town. There is nobody out here, nothing. If something happens to a vehicle or something like that, I gotta figure a way to get home, especially if it's at night and it's dropping negative 20. Just being in the vehicle, I could possibly die by exposure if I don't have a lot of fuel. So things need to kind of tailor, you know, go up bigger and I need to have more capabilities and that's exactly what this is. So I'm gonna show you what's in mine and how I seasonally change and regionally change my bag. So stick with me and we'll dive right into it. All right, everybody. So. I have a lot of the stuff laid out on what I specifically change. Now you're going to see bag is still reasonably full, but that's a lot of things that I don't change. So if you want to see the items that are normally in a summer loadout, I'll put a link to a video below that has everything. This is just the seasonal and regional changes that I do specifically. So moving here on the left hand side, clothing. That is a really big thing that often changes out for me and even depends on where I go. If I plan like right now, say I'm gonna do a week hike or something like that way up in the mountains, I'll probably take this out and I'll change it up depending on where I'm going, what temperatures I'm gonna face. I try to kind of pre-game and figure out the best strategy and the lightest weight stuff I can get for the most uh, capability. So. Technically, your clothing is your first layer of shelter. That, that's just what it is. That's why we wear it. And then you can move up to your other shelter items over here. But you've always got to start off with a firm base. So what I prefer is fleeces or wool or synthetics. I try to stay away from cotton. Now, there is a little bit of cotton in here. It's hard to get away from. I mean, that's what the world we are. We're in cotton, and they make really good things in cotton. But I just prefer. Plus, wool is a little more expensive, but it works very well. So I try to lean towards fleeces myself. I really like those for, um, I guess, sleeping in rather than actually hiking or moving because I do sweat a lot in fleece and it tends for me not to breathe. That might be different for you. I prefer wool because it tends to wick moisture away and it tends to breathe better but keep the heat in on you too. So that's what I mainly run with. I have these set up in a small, like they're two socks, they're kind of like a ranger roll kind of aspect. They have like a full set of clothing, just like um, a t-shirt, socks, underwear, like that. And I have, I normally run two of these in the winter time, along with long johns, which are wool. And then I have the, the military uh, 
forget what it's exposure system, which it's a, like a one to seven rating. And I normally go around the three mark with those along with, I carry 5.11s. These are not the Taclite Pros, but they're like the step above that. They're the heavier ones. And that's normally what I just keep in the bag because you know, your everyday carrier in my mindset is your first line gear along with the clothing you wear. So I normally always wear good stuff. Like I have 5.11s on with Long John's under this and then wool and then a military system underneath just because it's like, you know, 15 or 16 degrees out here. My hands are actually starting to get cold as we speak. But, so that's normally what I carry. So it's kind of a layered approach. You kind of start off with what you have on you and you move up from there. Same with the sleep system. So sleep systems on what I use in the winter time. Now I'm talking, I'm probably gonna see maybe negative 40, negative 50 up here. Now that's absolutely insane. So I would tailor majority of all these clothes on one night with all the sleep system that I have. And particularly the, one of the bags that I go to right now is a Recon 5 bag. Now these are actually very inexpensive for what you get out of it. You can see it's negative 12 degrees Celsius and that is just the bag alone. Now I get it, you gotta add 10 or 15 degrees just to uh, the bag itself and that's the actual rating. But then once you tailor it with a good system that's on you like I do with wool and then other wool materials like a wool blanket which I'll discuss here in a minute and then you add say a tent which this is a Katoma Wolverine tent. This is a one man tent. It is, it's kind of like an automatic open. You kind of throw it on the ground and it uh, expands out. That's what the, the US military is using right now and that's why I liked it so much. It does come with a rain fly and it's a very small one person tent to keep that low profile and keep that heat in. The bigger the tent is, the more room and the more air that you're gonna have to heat up in that to keep yourself reasonably warm. So this is an awesome kit. I think the whole kit probably is like $200, but you can find just a 10 alone for like 100 and then upgrade the Rainfly from there. Now I never personally go anywhere in the wintertime without a Thermarest or some kind of pad because the ground will just absolutely suck the heat out of you at, at night. And especially if we're talking get home bag, bug out bag, or even just going out hunting or camping, this is something that is definitely necessary in a cold weather environment. Now, during the summertime, this is normally all I carry. I don't carry anything else. This is the Gore-Tex Bivy, the military modular sleep system, and then it has a Wubby inside. So that's pretty good for, you know, 40, 50 degrees. I've done it before, plus with the layering of your clothing on you, it's a pretty decent setup, but I cannot get down, you know, below freezing without something else and that's exactly what so the next thing that i mainly swap out with is bags so you saw i run a kelty eagle 128 and some of you are like oh my gosh that is absolutely insane 128 liter pack for a get home bag type of situation that stays in the vehicle and yes i understand that's big but when you're dealing with negative 50 degree temperatures you need to bring a lot of gear with you it's just the name of the game you can get a better sleep system as well. The military modular sleep system is about $350 to $400, and it is rated to negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is another option. But getting back to the bags, I used to run, like I said in the beginning, the Kelty um, Red Wing 50. Awesome, awesome bag. Actually, it might be a Coyote. I know the, the Red Wing is the smaller one. The Coyote is a 60 or 65, my mistake. Anyways, it is the Red Wing, and it's 50 liter pack. And that's what I use for Eastern coast of the United States because, you know, I didn't see too much, like maybe 20 degrees max here, not the case. So there are considerations that you need to do and you need to figure out what's good in your regional area and you need to test it. Just go out and try it. Go in your backyard. Don't You don't need to go out in the middle of nowhere like I am here and just stay the night. Just go in your backyard, set it up, and if you can get through a 20 degree night and you're fine, then perfect, it works. But if you can't and you're too cold, all you gotta do is just step in the house 10 feet away and then rethink and go, well, I need to change something out because that isn't working. It's a lot better to be cold and miserable for about five or 10 minutes in your backyard than actually when you need your items and you're in a situation. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, like, 
talking about you know philosophy and other stuff i normally don't do that i normally try to give you actual like raw data and material and whatnot but this is a little bit different so but if you like this please hit that like please comment below let me know what you're thinking um hit that subscribe button there's a lot of other stuff coming up so i plan on doing all this stuff and having a ton of fun doing it i don't make any money on this i don't plan to that's not my intention i'm just here having fun and just passing on a lot of the knowledge that i found out through an older generation that has taught me so that's the best way we can communicate is pass things on rather than holding on to them and just you know not passing them on because that's how things get lost throughout history so thanks everybody hope you all have a great day